I'm talking about a very simple FK and stretchy structure for spines or joints or whatever else you want to use it for. Probably being be great for snakes. Very simple. Uh, I do have a more complex structure for uh, for snakes or pretty much any other structure, but this one actually is really simple and fairly quick. So let's start out with a single joint. Now this structure is basically a joint with a curve that's a part of it, and that's actually pretty easy to make. All you need is, of course, to create a joint. And it's important to create the joint so it has the orientation that you want. So if you want it to orient straight up and down, or whichever direction, when you're clicking it out, you can click it out from your side view. And, you know, just press shift and it orients that first joint. And then you can delete the one you just created. So the first one is now oriented according to that. So you basically want to orient your joints first. Or your joint first. Okay. Or you can just use the global default orientation for a joint. It's pretty much up to you. So in general, create a joint. Okay, I'll make it a little bigger so it's a little easier to see in this video. Okay, so let's say we take this, so take that joint down. And let me move my other joint aside. That's the one I'll use, but I'm just going to show you how to make it. So we've got our joint. Okay, we've got a joint. And now we need a curve. So you go to your your nerves menus or surfaces menus, and you want to basically create a curve, or you can go to the shelves and choose uh, create, or go to the create menu and just create a circle, a nerve circle. Size it whatever size you want it to be. Once you size it there, make sure you also freeze it. You know, freeze your scale. And so you can actually right click in the channels box on the attribute and just drag down to see freeze and choose scale or you can go to modify freeze transformations and freeze it from there. Okay. You could also delete your history on there, although it won't really matter for very long. Now I usually name the curve as well, and this is just so that it names the shape inside too. And let's call it spine one. Alright. Or you can call it spine curve if you want to be a little more specific. I like to be a little more specific uh, because I'm going to usually end up creating a lot of objects. And so usually telling, uh, reminding myself of what the part actually is, is a good idea. So that if I encounter any issues, I can kind of uh, retrace my own steps at any point. So now I want to actually take this curve and only connect it so it becomes part of this joint, which is uh, joint one. And I'll actually pre-name it to spine joint one. Uh, I already have a spine joint one, so we'll call this one spine joint uh, zero one, just so the name's a little different. Now I'm going to take my curve, hit the down arrow on my keyboard, so I'm selecting the shape in, uh, inside of the curve. So when you select it like that, and you just drag select over an object, you're selecting the top row transform that has all your channels box that you can keyframe. What you see highlighting is the thing inside of it. And that's what I want to move, that's what I want to select, and that's what I want to move. So hit the down arrow, so select that shape, or you can even go to your uh, attribute editor when you select the transform. And you can just click through the tabs to the one that's also named with the same name, but it says shape in the name. And you can tell it to select that. Okay. And then I'm going to just select my joint. And now in my Mel line at the bottom, if yours says Python, just click on the name, and it'll switch to Mel. And then you want to type in parent space minus r space minus s. And this is basically like a parent relative to shape or surface. So what it means is it'll actually take the curve, it'll move it into the transform of a selected object, and reorient it accordingly. And so if I just press enter, And now you can see when I select my joint, and my, when I select my joint, the curve highlights. 
and also when I select try to just select the curve I always get the joint because they're actually part of the same object now even in your outliner as you can see the icon for that joint is now a curve okay that's because they're all uh, the object types are now mixed okay so that's how you create this basic shape and so now I'm going to go back to my original one okay so when you create a joint um, just at zero it's all zeroed out but once you start to start putting it into a structure you actually start to get transforms on it so you actually get translate whatever and it'll basically be the relative difference between it and another joint so if I duplicated this one move this one up and then parented it in to this joint its position is always going to be relative to the object that it's parented to no matter where it is so even if I took this one and I moved it up and it's at like a, an additional one unit away the second joint that I created still remains at 0.68 because it's 0.68 units away from its parent okay so what I want to do is I want that to stay at zero so how do I do that so the easiest way to do that would be to create my joint but leave it at zero but I need to also reposition it so the easiest way to do that is to select my joint and to create a group around it and instead of repositioning the joint I reposition the group so I'm going to move that group up by one unit and so the group I'm going to name spine and we'll just call it group 2 okay and so now we have my initial joint and we have our secondary joint and that's my secondary joint is still at zero everything's still default and that's what we want so I'm going to create a couple more duplicate then move it up to two and the group already is renamed but we need to go and rename the joint as well duplicate again move it up to three could rename later but I'd rather do it now while I'm thinking about it and we'll do one more okay and move that one up to four so now we have five joints for our spine all at default location default value pretty easy right okay so everything is zeroed out and we're actually almost done so what we're going to do now is we're going to select group 2 I'm going to shift select down parent it to my first joint come up again hit the up arrow so I can select the group shift select the joint below it press P curve up arrow shift select joint press P curve up arrow so I can select the group or you can select the extra group from your outliner doesn't matter which just select P and so now what we have is if I select just click on the curve you see that it's still all default still all default all the way down the chain okay so now these are all connected what you're gonna get is basically it looks perfectly normal but the big difference is is that all of your controls are zeroed out so you can actually key these and animate them and it's not double transforming it's everything just moves relative to the other objects if you select all of them like this you can move them together sort of create a nice stretching effect a nice, nice squash and this is all keyable because you can always get back to your defaults you can also rotate this stuff and so this is actually great for a cartoony simple cartoony character spine an arm anything that you need to be able to stretch and rotate and, and even scale you can also scale all of these and get some very interesting effects okay now you see it's scaling like this because each one of these joints is actually scaling relative to relative to the joint before it 
so you can get some very interesting effects with the structure. So I could scale this one. So this is also a drawback because if you scale this, it also scales everything above it, so you'd have to counter animate the scale. But still, it could be a very useful setup, and it's really simple. So that's pretty much it. It's a stretchy FK joint structure. Great for spines, arms, legs, snakes, serpents, anything else you can think of that might need. So basically a simple FK structure with a very simple stretchy structure that's perfectly keyable. You can get your defaults. There is another variation of this that I could do using constraints so that you get more of a, uh, a gooey stretchy structure with some FK control. But I think I've already done a tutorial. So uh, yeah, I hope that this comes in handy. And happy rigging.